spectroscopy is uh, a little bit different than uh, most of the spectroscopy methods in the way that in most spectroscopy methods you use a broadband source, basically a lamp. Uh, so it has light all over the spectrum, more or less like the sun. Uh, but in Raman you use a single wavelength source, like a laser. So there is only one wavelength and you shoot uh, the laser down to your sample. And, uh, and what the light will do, it will uh, create a change in the vibrations of the molecules. So unless you are really at the, on the south pole at the, the lowest temperature, in any material the molecules are, are vibrating a little bit. And when you uh, add some energy by shooting a laser in there, you change these vibrations. And Raman is really looking at uh, these changes because when, when the, the molecules vibrations change, they emit a little bit of light. Uh, so there's some, some energy coming out of the, uh, of the sample in, in terms of light. Uh, and you can measure that. That will typically look like some peaks, which is a fingerprint. So where the peaks are and how strong they are only depends on the material you're looking at. So you can say this is like a, uh, yeah, a social security number or something like that for every uh, material, every organic material that this uh, unique fingerprint is really unique for a specific uh, material. So you can use Raman to detect uh, if a material is there or not. And that's why, for instance, it's used a lot in the pharmaceutical industry or it's being used more and more because what you want there is to measure is the active ingredients in our pills or is some, uh, somebody faking it and just putting chalk or whatever, there's nothing in there, it's just white pills with nothing in or even worse, it's something that's even dangerous for you. Some of the characteristics of Raman is that it's really, really weak signals. So the typical way that people say is that if you have uh, one million photons from your Raman laser, then you get one photon out as your Raman signal. So that's a lot of, uh, that's not very high efficiency, so to speak. So for this reason, uh, in Raman, um, you use really long integration time. The integration time helps to, uh, to collect uh, photons as they come. So you generate a charge in the detector every time there's a photon coming. So you wait for a long time and build up a strong signal. The bad thing about that is when you build a strong signal, you also build a lot of noise or dark level uh, uh, electrons. So to get rid of that or avoid that, you cool the spectrometers. So at least for high-end Brahman, you always use long integration time and cooled detectors. Also, the peaks in Raman, as shown up here, is normally quite densely. They're very sharp and they are close, uh, close together in some cases. So also what is characteristic for Raman, you need high resolution spectrometers. So high resolution and cooled uh, detectors, that's typical for Raman. Also in the pharma, uh, a, a, an up and coming technology is Raman, as I said. And there are basically two uh, key areas where people use Raman spectroscopy. So one is on the incoming inspection of raw materials. So for any big producer of, of pharmaceutical uh, pills or tablets, they have big bags of their active ingredients coming in and they have to test them. Now what they can do with Raman spectroscopy is they can have a handheld device, not opening the bag, just pointing at it and seeing through the, the, it doesn't have to be a transparent material, it can be paper or whatever, or black uh, um, plastic bag, just point it and shoot the laser through and get the results and they can see, okay, it's the right ingredients in there. So they can feel 99.99% sure that if they start producing now, they're okay. They have the right material, so they're safe and they can just uh, go on. So this is uh, typically a place uh, because it's using handheld Raman that most will want a, a kind of a low-end spectrometer. So this is where our Freedom HR or Freedom C typically goes into those kind of applications. 
in a complete other end of the production of, uh, of tablets in the pharmaceutical industry, they are also uh, starting to use ramen uh, as a QC or Q, uh, QA tick on, on the, uh, the tablets when they come out. So in that case, it's a finished product that's being tested with a laser. You shoot on each pill and typically it's, it's in big trays. So the trays will move around and you measure on each pill. Uh, and of course, they don't do that on every pill. It's like you take out a sample a batch and put it into this machine and it will move around and test all the tablets if the right ingredients are there. This is a much more uh, demanding application because you have a very small tablet so, uh, so it can be hard to actually uh, identify and measure the, uh, the active ingredients. So for this reason, they need really high sensitive spectrometers. So in that case, we offer our Eagle Raman S or Eagle Shortwave NIR. And it also, this is not handheld instruments. This is typically big tabletops where you have trays of pills you put in. So it doesn't matter that the instrument is big and it's sta sta uh, standing on a table and things like that. Also inline, and again, this is an up and coming, it's not used a lot, but uh, Raman is kind of a complementary uh, method to NIR. So NIR can see some molecules uh, nicely and some molecules they can't really see. Uh, and the fortunate thing is that the ones that NIR is bad at, Raman is typically better at. So that's a good thing. Uh, so some will combine the two or some will simply use Raman instead of NIR. And here you have many more uh, choices depending on uh, what uh, what is kind of the how difficult your, your Raman signal is. If it's kind of low end easy uh, measurement, maybe you can use the Freedom HR, Freedom C. Uh, but if you have really demanding, requiring really high sensitivity, you move towards your Eagle Raman S uh, spectrometer. Thank you.